May the peace and the goodness of God be your portion, not only for once, but all the days that you live in this world, as long as you continue as his own child. May that peace that Jesus promised never elude you, never leave you. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to read James chapter 5, and I'll read verses 7 and 8. James 5, 7 and 8. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruits of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. I know that in our generation, nobody's talking about patience in anything. We want it here and now. You know, this generation usually is referred to as a fast food generation. In those days, you will go into a restaurant and wait, and they will cook the meal and bring. Now you are standing on the counter and pick what you want, and that's it. And so we get to the point of everything we wanted here and now. Even following God, we don't have the patience to wait for God. If you prayed for a thing this morning and it's not happening before noon, oh, God has delayed. He said, be patient. And it brings a good example. There is no one who plants a crop today and harvests today, in spite of all the technology. You still need some period before you arrive at harvest. And anyway, all of those ones that they manufacture by chemicals, and they are supposed to be plants that are planted. A normal plant that should take three months is done in two weeks, three weeks. What's the result in the human system? More cancers, more complications. Which means the natural sequence of things must take effect. He said, look at the farmer. He will plant. He's waiting for the rains to come upon those crops. The early rains come. He's still waiting for more rains to come to make the crops grow properly. He has patience. He has to wait the duration of time it takes that particular crop to have a yield. And that yields to come to maturity and on to harvest time. Then he will take a harvest of what he had done, but he waited patiently. Now think of a crop that matures in three months. And after two weeks, the farmer goes there, adjusts near a harvest, and uproots the crop. What has he gotten? He has destroyed all of his work. After two weeks, I am too exasperated. I can't wait for you any longer. He moves away from there, goes to a different direction. What has he done? He lost everything. So many of us lose out on everything because we never want to wait for God. As far as some of us are concerned, God never came in time. No, I want to emphasize something. And I want it to sink in. God is never late. Never. Has never been late. Will never be late. So that thing is not happening. It's not because God is late, but because God knows that that thing shouldn't happen at that point. Does God conduct your life? He knows the exact time things should happen. And anyway, if you are waiting for the coming of Jesus, then you have to wait patiently until God decides that he should come. Does he have to come in the day that you are still alive? Not necessarily. Yes, there will be people on this earth on the day Jesus comes, second coming. But then you might be gone, I might be gone. But while we are still waiting for him, how do you wait in preparedness? Now let's assume that farmer finishes planting his crop. He goes back home to sleep. He never comes back. He's waiting at home. And if it takes one year for the crop to mature, he stays at home all of one year. At the end of one year, he shows up in the farm. What does he find? A thick forest, not a farm. So when he says the farmer waits, the farmer is waiting in working, in nurturing the plants, in taking care of the plant, weeding the area, making sure that wild animals, all manner of wild things, wrong things don't get in there. He removed the tears that come in there. 
He's careful to watch out for thieves and everything. He's not going home to wait. Oh, I became born again in 1920, so I, I just live my life. Don't worry, I'm waiting for God. No. Diligence to follow the correct track. That farmer has to be diligent to do the proper thing so that in the end he will have a good harvest. Otherwise he will harvest nothing or have some very wretched harvest that is not commensurate with the effort that he think he had put in. Because although he had put in effort, he put in the wrong effort or not sufficient or doing things in the proportions that they should not have been done. How is your Christianity? How are you guiding yourself towards heaven? We have that Christianity, just relax, don't worry, everything is all right, no matter what, the Lord will take you there. That's not Christianity. That's the wrong game that you are trying to play. The true Christianity is that you guide your steps. You guide your steps towards God. You walk in the will of God, following and obeying the commandments of God. Jesus said, obey my commandments. My Father will be pleased with you and will come and make a residence in you. That's when you are having a good harvest. Will the Father come and make a residence in you when you refuse to obey his commandments? There's no way in the scripture that says that is possible, no matter who tells you. You cannot compel God to come and take a residence in you. He does it by himself. So, it's, so you also be patient. Establish your hearts. Establish your hearts. Conduct your life in such a way that it is established in God. In the ways of God. Walk in the will of God. Do the things that are pleasing in the sight of God. If indeed you are expecting Jesus. If indeed. Heaven is your ultimate home. If indeed you want to live in this world, not of the world, but only in the world, so that even in this world, your citizenship is in heaven, then establish your heart in God. Do the things that are pleasing in his sight, and God adopts you as his own, and he calls you his own. What manner of love that can be? that you, that I, that all of us could be called the children of God. Indeed, we are, if we are obeying him. And my prayer is that we will continue to wait patiently for him, established in him, following him continually. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.